Hey guys, Lucas here, and today I'm exploring Ikebukuro in this beautiful blue hour with my trusty Ricoh GR3. And what I want to talk about in this video today is basically how I got started as a street photographer, okay? So it's not really a job or anything, but I think there is kind of a, a way that you fall into it. And yeah, I want to share that with you guys. But just before that, I also want to announce that Rico has a new hashtag that they are using all over the world. It's um, shootgr underscore and then your city name. So for example, for me, it's shootgr underscore Tokyo. And the idea is when you post some photos that you took with your trusty Ricky, you know, you might meet other photographers from your city. And especially as the world starts to open up, um, you know, all over the place, then you can go out and hopefully meet some people. So go ahead and use the tag. I'm going to be using it for photos that I post from this video today. And uh, of course, one last thing, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Please like the video and subscribe to the channel uh, because you know you want to see more of these videos. So yeah, we're going to explore. And as we explore, maybe I'll take some cool photos on the way. Maybe not. We'll see. You never know. But um, yeah, let's go this way. Make sure my settings are good first. Just real quick, I always make sure my settings are good. I'm on aperture mode. Right now on f2.8 with auto ISO and a minimum shutter speed of 1 over 250. Because, you know, we might be shooting things that are moving with action. Anyway, let's see here. Just checking. You know, I, I tell myself, we're going to make a video where I we walk around and talk about something. And I always find that's tricky because I want to shoot stuff. It's kind of hard to focus on telling you guys a story. But anyway, I think uh, jump into it. Let's go down this way. So how did I get started doing street photography? Or why did I do it? Why did I start in the first place? And the answer to that question, the initial beginning answer, is actually extremely simple. I needed a reason, a good excuse, to get out of the house. That's it. I uh, moved to Tokyo in 2008. And I had a cheap camera, like a, not this one, like a really basic, simple point and shoot camera. And, you know, I was just not going out as much as I'd like to, you know, I was, I was just, it was just like work, maybe meet a friend for a drink or something, and that's it, you know, explore the city. I realized I needed some motivator, some reason to go outside and explore. And so I got a camera, I got an SLR at the time, and I didn't know what street photography was, but in inevitably I was kind of doing it, not very well, and probably, and not only street photography, I was shooting all kinds of stuff. But, um, but I was definitely doing some semblance of street photography, something that might be called street photography. And as I was posting it online, I was you know, running into other photographers who were definitely doing street photography on social media. This is before Instagram. I was using a website called DeviantArt, which is all kinds of art there, but including photography. And I started to meet people in this community and seeing their work. And then we would, you know, they would give me feedback or I would just look at their photos or hear about you know, phot photographers that they liked. And so I learned then about like the great photographers, people like, of course, Henry Cartier-Bresson and Saul Leiter and, you know, all those people, Gary Winogrand, um, Joel Majorowicz, you know, the, the classic great street photographers. And I saw their work and I was like, wow, this is really good. And I want to do stuff like this, you know, and I really enjoyed photography. And I particularly was captivated by street photography because it just felt so pure and simple. You know, it's just, there's, there isn't, how would I say? There aren't a lot of rules in street photography. You just go out and you just shoot candid photos of people and whatever you might encounter in the city. Um, now, having said that, I don't only do street photography. I, I definitely do, I would call myself more like an urban photographer. So I shoot all kinds of things in the city. But, um, you know, primarily I do enjoy street photography as kind of the most enjoyable thing. And so to me, you know, the other beautiful aspect of it is is that like when I'm out here with this camera, when I'm wow, just doing my thing, it's almost like, you know, like Batman putting on his mask. It's like a superpower, you know? Basically when I'm just out without a camera, I'm a regular person exploring the city. But when I have the camera, suddenly everything becomes so much more interesting and fascinating. And I, can, I feel like I can explore the city much more deeply than I can when I don't have my camera with me. I would say also, a big part of it is that it became a job, you know, a career in many ways. One way is that me and uh, Axel, the guy who's carrying the camera right now <laughs> for me, 
started a business uh, called I Explore, where I teach photography, and so does he. We both teach photography, in particular street photography, but not only. And so, you know, going out and doing street photography every day was, you know, it's work. It's a job, but a fun job. I'm not complaining. It's, it's a passion and a job. So I'm lucky to do, to do that. And then, of course, sometimes I get hired for, you know, commercial work that also is very similar to street photography. It's commercial work. It's staged. It's not candid. It's not really street photography. But in terms of style and look, there's a lot of overlap. So my clients sometimes expect a kind of street photography look to the photos that I shoot for them because my street photography, my personal street photography portfolio has a look that they like and they want to put it into their project. So yeah, but I think if I boil it down to like the one single reason why I still continue to do street photography is that when I go out, it's just I feel the most kind of at peace and sort of meditative, you know, kind of, it's hard to put into words, but I'm getting to this idea of mindfulness. I've talked about this in videos and blog posts on my blog, um, but basically it's a way to really tune into the world. It's not like being in the zone where you kind of forget what's going on and you focus too much. It's just this kind of like extreme awareness of things around you. So you can take in the world really deeply and experience it more fully thanks to photography. And so I think that's why I continue to love it. And that's why I know that I will still be doing street photography, probably with a Rico if they still make them, when I'm, you know, super old, 80 years old, if I live that long. Um, because it's just something that I really, really enjoy doing. And that's the bottom line. It's just fun. You know, not much else I can really say about it. So that was a ton of talking without any shooting. So let's shoot a little bit. All right, so we ended up in a little bit more quiet part of Ikebukuro here with, I, I would say, for more opportunities for some good street photography. So we'll actually get some shooting done instead of just me blabbing. But I'm gonna blab a little more. I'm gonna say one more thing. And I wanna say why specifically this camera, because I do have other cameras as well, but I really, really love this one. This is one of my go-tos. And the reason is, though how I got into it was that actually Axel, again, the guy behind the camera, he had a GR2 and he recommended it to me. And I was sort of waffling between getting one of these, but getting some other compact camera. But in the end, I went with this one because it's pretty, it's just, it's the smallest camera you can get that's this capable. And I wanted something that fits in my pocket because this goes full circle back to this conversation about street photography. I like to do photography all the time. So I want to have something with me all the time so that I could you know, be ready to shoot because you never know what you might see that's interesting or, or whatever. And you know, I, I like shooting with my other cameras, but they're bigger and I don't always bring them with me, okay? So yeah, let's start to look around here and shoot some stuff. Like I said, this area is a little bit quieter than that area. And I generally find the busy, the busy high streets to be less conducive to good street photos. I like to get on the side streets where there's a little bit fewer people around when it's really crowded. Yeah, it could still work, but it's just not my, not my kind of scene exactly. All right, let's not get run over. This guy was kind of cool. Nah, now he got away. That's fine. Let's shoot something here, maybe. This might be better with a longer lens, but well, it actually kind of works. Nice. That's cool. Nice silhouette in the reflection here. I like that kind of stuff. Kind of a messy photo. I like when it's messy, it's a little bit distorted and, and confusing. Well, I'm gonna shoot in this direction too. Okay, that's pretty cool. Right here might be kind of a cool shot, the way the light comes down from behind here. And as I was happening, I missed this guy coming out of this place, which would have been good. But oh well. Yeah, so what I was saying earlier that for me, street photography, ultimately, like the number one most important thing about it is that it's about mindfulness. It gets me into this 
mindful approach and, and a more deeper perception of the city around me. And it's hard to convey that when I'm, we're making one of these videos for YouTube because I'm just blabbing the whole time, I'm talking, and, you know. But when I'm out on my own, I'm just quietly shooting, right? I, I don't talk to anybody. I, mean, I might talk to somebody on the street, but I, I'm focused on what I'm doing, but not overly so. I'm not like in the zone where I'm totally tuning out the world. In fact, it's the opposite. I'm tuning everything in. I'm trying to look around and accept as much of what I'm seeing around me with as little prejudice as possible. I'm not trying to judge, oh, this is a good photo, this is a bad photo. I just let it happen. And if I see a good moment, I shoot a good moment. If I don't, I don't. It also means that I don't, like, I don't even, I know this video is, why did I start street photography? But I kind of don't like the term street photography anymore, honestly, because it feels very limiting. People have all these opinions of what it is. Well, really, I'm more of just a, a photographer. I'm just a guy who goes out, looks around at the world, and I have this cool little gadget, and this allows me to record the interesting, beautiful things that I see. And those things can be anything. Sometimes they're candid street photos involving people, but sometimes they're just, you know, like a plant like this that's lit in a very interesting way, for example. You know, and, and seriously, I just noticed this right now. I actually do like the light on this and the light on the pole next to it. It's fascinating. And this might not be a good photo or whatever, but I'm just going to shoot it anyway because it just kind of interests me. Right? It catches my, my attention. Okay, so let's see here. And there we go. So that's what it is about for me. It's about mindfulness, exploration of the city. And as I mentioned already, the camera is just a tool. It gives you a kind of a, a superpower to, to be able to explore the city in this way. All right. So I think we'll wrap it up here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Of course, please remember to leave any comments you'd like below, questions and whatever. And if you uh, have any uh, questions, of course, I'll answer them. I, I go through, sometimes I don't look at the comments for a couple of weeks, but eventually I check back and we'll answer them as best as I can. And of course, if you uh, like the channel, like what you see, please subscribe so you can get more videos from us next time. All right, thank you so much for watching. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.